Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if I can get everyday objects to float in the air. Okay, so the way I'm going to be doing this is by using a fact that states that when a fluid goes faster, the pressure is lower. And if you don't believe me, let me show you. So I'm gonna blow in between these bottles here, and since the air is going faster in there, the pressure will be lower, and so they should get pushed together by the air outside of it. Let's see if it happens. So you see, every time I blow in between them, they get sucked together. And what can you do with that knowledge? Well, for starters, you can make things float. So I have here a leaf blower and a ball. So when I turn on the leaf blower and put the ball in the path of the air, the air is gonna flow around the ball. And the air that's going around it is gonna move faster, and so the pressure from the outside is gonna push in on the ball, and it'll keep it stable. So you can make the ball float in the air just by blowing air from below it. And the cool thing is that you don't even have to keep the air below it. You can turn it sideways, and the ball continues to float. Let me show you what I mean. So this principle of a fluid having lower pressure when it's moving faster is called Bernoulli's principle. So we know that a ball floats easily when there's fast moving air. So I'm gonna try some other objects today and see if they'll also float when we have fast moving air. So I'm gonna try a lemon, a bowl, a ball with holes in it, and a small rocket. And bonus fruit at the end, an apple. This was my favorite. So based on how I told you about how this works, why don't you make your guesses right now of what you think is going to happen with all of these objects? I'm not quite sure what will happen. I have some guesses, but let's check it out. Okay, first let's try our bowl. So our bowl is pretty symmetric on one axis, but on the other one, not really. So I'm going to hold it like this and see if we can get it to float. Okay, here we go. Bernoulli's principle on a bowl. Three, two, one. Okay, so the bowl just wasn't stable enough to stay in the path of the air. For some reason, it just kept getting pushed off to the side. So I think the reason the bowl won't stay in the center is because it's not symmetrical on all sides. It's essentially a cut in half ball. And so if the bowl tilts even a little bit, the pressure on this side is greater than the pressure on this side because there's more surface area. And so the, it just pushes it out of the path. Okay, now how about a lemon? So a lemon is pretty symmetrical. So let's see if that will help it be more stable in the stream. Okay, floating lemon. Three, two, one. That was awesome, so the lemon floated. So at first it was bouncing, pretty unstable, but actually when I tilted it a little bit, it got more stable and it almost stayed, it stopped tumbling head over heels and it just kind of turned like that in the air. So it was almost like it was just levitating right there in front of me. That was so awesome, floating lemon. <laughs> 
So again, I think the reason the lemon worked is because it's very much closer to a ball than a bowl was. So it has the advantage that even if it's tilted a little bit, because it's symmetrical on both ends, it doesn't change the pressure much. Okay, next let's try a ball with a hole in it. So this one's a little bit interesting because it's symmetrical just like the ball is, but it has these open ends. So let's see how these open ends affect it and if we can get it to float in the stream, even with a way for the air to pass right through it. Okay, ball with a hole in it. Three, two, one. So it looks like the ball with the hole in it also works, but a lot more unstable. I think it's because of these edges, these open edges. Essentially, if the air catches it, it just pushes it out of the stream. Okay, last we'll try the rocket. So the rocket has the advantage, it's very aerodynamic. It's symmetrical through one axis, but not the other one. Okay, floating rocket, three, two, one. Okay, so that didn't work at all. I'd say that was the worst out of all of them. And I think it's because it's so aerodynamic. So first it just falls right through the air, so the air doesn't have enough drag on it to even keep it afloat. And then the other thing is, of course, that if it starts to tumble, then again, the pressures aren't equal at all, and so it just gets pushed out of the stream. And especially if it catches these fins, it just throws it out of the way. So it looks like the lemon and the ball are the best. Now we know that a lemon works, let's try some other fruit just for fun. Okay, let's try an apple. That was awesome. That was spinning so fast. So I learned something just from doing that. It looks like the more spherical the object is, the more you can tilt it to the side. But I had it completely almost at a 90 degree angle and it was still floating in the air above my hand. <laughs> and the apple was just spinning end over end like that. It almost made it more stable. The reason it made it more stable is because it essentially became a gyroscope. And so when something's spinning, it's harder to turn it on any axis. And so when it was spinning, it stabilized it in the air. That was really cool. So whenever I talk about Bernoulli's principle, I always have to bring up planes. For some reason, Bernoulli's principle is always taught that that's the reason why planes fly. That's what I was taught in school and I'm not sure why. One of the main reasons is that Bernoulli's principle just doesn't give enough force to lift a plane off the ground. It can float light objects in the air with fast moving air like that, but to lift a Boeing 747 off the ground, you need some different effects. So the way planes really fly is essentially by creating vortexes around their wings based on their angle of attack, and it swirls air around the wings, but there's an overall movement of air downwards, and that movement and throwing of air downwards is what pushes the plane up. Just like in a helicopter, the propeller spinning pushing air downwards pushes the helicopter upwards. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. If you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button. And I mentioned in my last video, right now I have an open survey or quiz. You can click on the link in my description to go to it. If you go to it, you can win one of five Amazon Echoes that I'm gonna be giving out. I bet you can get 100% on the quiz in there. And I wanted to test your knowledge on some of my videos. If you don't know the answers to all of them, it's okay, it's an open YouTube quiz, so go for it. 
And don't forget to leave me any comments or questions you have in the comments section. I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.